Hey devs, I think I'd like to start a new app to explore again SwiftUI as a beginner. In this video, I will just create a playing card model, all 52 of them, where I am able to create a deck of cards, shuffle it, then show the cards, and flip the cards. Maybe we'll create a playing card app. I was thinking, maybe a big two game eventually. We'll slowly build this into a big two game. That's the objective, but that's too far ahead. I will tell you what Big 2 game is all about later and let's work towards that goal. I mentioned about model when I said playing card model. That is because Apple's design paradigm in an object-oriented pattern is called the MVC or the Model View Controller. However, when I open the Apple documentation about MVC, it says retired document. This document may not represent best practices for current development. There's a new paradigm when coding in Swift UI. It is called MVVM or the Model View View Model. I won't say that MVC is the old way. What I mean is, this is the paradigm we follow when we code using UI Kit, where we program in object-oriented pattern. We have UI views, UI buttons, UI labels, which are all classes. And to create one of these buttons or labels, we use inheritance. And still a lot of developers are still using UI Kit, so MVC is not yet old. But whether MVC or the new MVVM, model is an integral part of these paradigms. And that is what we are aiming today, to build a playing card model. Maybe at some point later, I will have to explore the other parts of this paradigm and see how it will apply to the app as it gets bigger. For now, let's just deal with the model. Let's start a new project called Rummy Game. I have the link of the previous video about creating a new project. So here is the new starter project. Let's go over the code. This is a struct called content view that has this mandatory var named body that returns some view. And this text behaves like a view. Or as this is functional programming, we can say the text conforms to the view protocol. If I open the help using option click, while pressing option, a question mark appears, and I can click on the text to show help about text. And I can see that text conforms to the view protocol, and if I option click on view, it shows that view is a protocol. These are all functional programming in SwiftUI. What we have here are structs and protocols. This is not object-oriented programming where you have classes and inheritance. Going back to the code, this can actually be of type text because this body is returning a type text. And text is a struct just like ints, strings, bool. They are all structs. There is a return statement here. But body can be anything that conforms to view or behaves like a view. It can also be an image. And if I option click on image, it also conforms to view. And if this is an image, then this cannot be of type text anymore. So really, the correct type of body is some view because we can put anything here that behaves like a view or conforms to view protocol. As this is a card game, let's show some cards and we'll use some card PNGs that I already have. But before that, let's talk about Assets Catalog. Assets Catalog is just a folder in Xcode that organizes the images, icons, and colors. Selecting the app icon brings you these square placeholders in different sizes. This is where I can place the app icon that I will be using in the app. For example, this is the app icon that will appear on the iPhone. There is an app icon that will appear on the settings or on notifications and the icons that will be used in the App Store. Now the default project setting says that this app only runs in iPhone and iPad. That is why there are only placeholders for the iPhone and iPad icon. But I can also go to Inspector and add Apple Watch icons if I am developing with Apple Watch or Mac and CarPlay icons. We can also add images that will be used in the app. It is usually in PNG format as they are lightweight. For example, we will add playing card images later on. But let's have a little experiment first. I have a sample image here with the 1x and 2x resolutions. Let's add these. Say I have an image that is of higher resolution resolution for a retina device, I just have to place it here and the appropriate image will be displayed. I don't have to code it. If I run using iPhone 13, for example,
example, the 3x image will be shown. If I run using iPod Touch 7th generation, it will use the 2x image. I am not sure if there are still devices that uses the 1x. And lastly, we can also add color assets. If I display text, for example, I can have a foreground color in blue. And there is red in here as well. Suppose I don't want this red. I want a Ferrari red. I can create a color set and named it Ferrari red. And let's enter the hex value. Let's search in Google what is the hex value of Ferrari red. I can enter the color scheme via its hex value or I can also use the color sliders. In this case, we'll just use the hex value. And now, I have a color set for Ferrari Red. You can also define different color sets for normal and dark modes. I can have a color set of header text that I can define as black in light mode and yellow in dark mode. All right, that's it for assets catalog. Let's now add all 52 card images into the asset catalog. And I will show the Queen of Hearts. I can add an image view from the object library and put the name of the image. Or even better, I can get the image itself in the media tab. If I want to scale the image to fit its current view, I can use resizable modifier. It will resize to fit the available space. However, I lose the aspect ratio. I can use aspect ratio fill. However, this goes beyond the view's bounds. Scaled to fill will have the same effect. Or I can use aspect ratio fit or scaled to fit, which will show the whole image without losing the aspect ratio. If I want to show another image, I cannot just copy paste and add it here. What will happen is it will just show another preview of the image. What we need is a container view, a view that can contain other views. And vertical stack and horizontal stack are examples of this. In this horizontal stack or H stack, I can show two cards for example. If we look at the H stack documentation, we can see that it also conforms to a view and it can have child views. So this is legal for the body to return an H stack. Now, we don't want to copy paste and have all 52 of this image view if we want to display all 52 cards. It's ugly to see repeating codes. There is another kind of view called for each. The nice thing about for each is it has the ability to loop into something and then it can create views and can use whatever data that it iterates in this view. Let's try this and put these card names into an array. Then we'll use for each to iterate in this array and then create an image for each iteration and use the card name in the array to show a particular card. There is an error that requires me to have something in this array that I am iterating to have some kind of ID to identify each of the items in this iteratable thing as unique. This is a requirement of for each that this array array conforms to identifiable. The quickest way is for me to add this ID equals to self. I'll just do it like this for now and more of this later too. Now, for each is not a container view. It can create child views, but it needs a container view to lay out these cards. Let's use again the H stack to show these cards horizontally. Great. Now, I can just add more in this array, spades, ace, clubs, jack. Now it seems like there are a lot going on here. We have for each that iterates the array and creates image views and each stack shows them horizontally. But in the end, the body just returns the result of this whole thing, which is this each stack. And we can put stack within stack. I can have a V stack here and show a label playing cards. Now I want to see here card view as the view name 
instead of just image. Let's create a card view. If I create a struct that conforms to view, it requires that we have this body that returns some view. And this body of card view will return the image of the playing card. Now I can write the code myself this way. But there is an easier way that is just to extract this image into a subview by command click on the image view and select extract subview. And this will create a subview and will even name it. Obviously, I don't like this name. I want to name it card view. To rename, I can do a find replace. Or even better, let's do command click again and select edit all in scope and rename this to card view. The edit all in scope basically is like find and replace all, but even better because it will highlight all the occurrences of the selected word and any changes made will automatically change in all the occurrences. There is another cool thing here that is more powerful than edit all in scope. If I command click and I select rename, this will show all references that will be renamed across multiple files and even file names. I will rename content view to main view. Now because we move this image here in card view, the card name is not defined in this struct. This is what the compiler is complaining about. So let's fix that by declaring the var here for this card name. Now there's another error up here. As we are not passing anything to card view and card view is expecting a card name. Why is that? Let's talk about these variables. There are two rules that should always be followed with variables in Swift. First, it must be strongly typed and second, it must be initialized. Let's take an example. I declared cards here above but I did not declare its type. It is actually an array of strings but I don't have have to say that because I already initialized it with an array of names of cards which are string. So if I option click on it, it knows that cards are array of strings. The type is inferred. But if I declare this as an empty array, then I have to specify its type. What about vars and lets? The rule is if the variable is not changing, then it should be defined as let. Although it will not complain if I keep it as var, but if I declare it as let and I change it somewhere later on, the compiler will complain that it should be declared as a var. Let's look at another one. This card name here below. Now it is strongly typed with string, but it is not initialized. So it is initialized when it was called here in for each. If I don't initialize here, then the compiler will complain. But if I have an initial value of empty string, then I don't have to specify the type because it will be a string as the initial value is an empty string. And I don't have to specify a card name when I call it because it has an initial value of an empty string. But can I declare it as let? If I declare it as let, then I cannot specify a card name when I call it because I am not allowed to change a let. So let's put it back as a var so I can change it. And if there is no initial value, then I have to provide an initial value when calling it. Would it be nice if I have the cards here as an array of type card and this card type will have a rank and a suit. Let's do that and create the card model. Let's create a new Swift file. I will not use Swift UI as I will not be doing anything with views or screen layouts. This is just purely the game model. I will name this file card game so that when I create a game and initialize it, I can say for example, blackjack is a card game or Rummy game is a card game. Straight away, we can see that it only imports foundation. There is no import of Swift UI. This is where the MVVM I was talking about in the beginning now coming into picture. We have a card game as the M for model and the main view as the V for view. And what we don't have yet is the VM or the view model. In the model, let's make a card struct. A card will have a rank and a suit. And let's declare both as a string for now. And let's create a test data that we will use in our game.
Let's go back to main view and let the cards be an array of cards. Now we said that variables should be strongly typed and initialized. We know the type, which is array of cards, but we need to initialize. I mentioned in the previous video that Canvas is just a Swift UI code, which is this preview provider that is just showing the main view. Let's supply the data in here to initialize the array of cards to the main view, and we will use the test data. There are several errors that come up. For each requires that card conform to hashable. Let's remove this ID for a second. We did this earlier because for each requires that this thing that it iterates must be identifiable, meaning each element in the array that it iterates must have some identification that is unique. Now that we remove the ID, the compiler is complaining that it does not conform to identifiable. So let's fix that by making the card identifiable. Now that we make it identifiable, let's provide the ID that makes it unique. There is a function here called UUID that generates a unique ID. So let's use that. So that solves our identifiable issue. This for each no longer returns just the card name. It returns the card small c which is of type card big C. Now that we have the rank and suit, we can use it here as the file name. Oops, we have a missing card. Probably the file name is incorrect. Yes, it's hearts with an S. I always get confused between Canvas and running the app in the actual device. This preview provider is just for this Canvas. I can actually live without it. And when my app actually runs, it doesn't start here in preview provider. It starts here in this at sign main. As this also calls main view, I have to supply the cards here too. But I will not use test data because that is only for the purpose of laying out views and testing how it looks like in the canvas. For my actual app, I will be supplying the entire 52 cards. And that's what we will do in the next video. Thanks again for watching and please like the video only if you liked it. And you can also subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of these types of coding. See you in the next one. Happy coding!